So I started 30 years in the police service. And during that time, yeah, I was dealt with violence. You know, do you recognize this guy here? It's one of your, he tried to come to Scotland and sort of rearrange Scottish history. But, um, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, violence has been a big part of my policing career, a big part. And I think I've tried over the last few years to really tone down this notion of the violent man in Scotland. It is. Here's me trying to Dr. Heisterkamp with a kill on my wedding. Yes. <laughs> this, man, this man can really suit a kill. This was the night before. <laughs> this, was this, this was the night before my, my sort of wedding party. I got Jack, I got um, Alan into my other kill. I have two or three kills. That kill was at 60 years old, Alan's wedding. It was my uncle's kill. I feel very sort of strongly about that. So I trusted this man to wear the kill. Um, but we need to really sort of look at a, a more positive narrative around, around men. We've seen a lot of men today, a lot of caring men that want to make a difference. But that doesn't mean we ignore the dark side of what's going on. I think that's what we're here today to talk about. Okay? Um, so, Scotland. Yeah, we often think about Scotland as the place where lovely castles, lovely lochs, people play the bagpipes. But the dark side of Scotland is violence. You know, Sam, I, I often say I, I work with Sam. Um, Many years ago, and Sam was a, he, he became a statistic about in 19, sorry, in 2013, he was killed with a knife. Lovely man, a dad like me, he worked at a domestic abuse helpline, got involved in the fight, and was stabbed and killed. Emily Drake, sorry, Emily Drake, the young girl there, she, she should have been 21 yesterday. Mm. 21 yesterday. And her mum um, gave permission to use Emily's picture. You know, Emily killed herself after being victimised through um, domestic violence. I work a lot in universities to get universities in Scotland to start thinking about gender-based violence, domestic violence, sexual violence as key issues for them to help young people learn and be successful. She should be 21, celebrating her birthday. So, Scotland has a dark side and it's violence. But we're doing some really fantastic things across Scotland to really make a difference. And I think things are getting better in Scotland. Still things to be done, still work to be done. But I want to share you some of the issues that we're, we're having in Scotland and probably, you know, they're very similar to things that I've been hearing about today and yesterday. Very, very similar issues. You know, I don't know if you're aware of Dr. Zimbardo, Dr. Phil as I often call him. Dr. It's, this is the guy that did the Stanford Prison Experiment back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Okay, he spent decades researching evil. He now wants to look at the everyday heroes. How do we turn, how do we turn good people into good people and, and get them to do good things? And he did a great talk called the TED Talk called The Demise of Guys. And the phrase he uses at the very start of that, boys and men are flaming out. Flaming out academically, in relationships, and sexually. And we see that across the world. Our boys are struggling. You know, in Scotland, we've seen boys struggling at school. Not being as successful at school as young girls. At universities, at, um, school exclusions. You know, boys are being excluded from school two, three, four times more than young girls at school. Why is that question? Education, less, less boys going into further education. That's something that we are seeing across Scotland. High levels of child sexual exploitation, another harmful sexualised behaviour. The last few years in Scotland, we've seen in the last 10 years, there's been a 100% increase in sexual violence in Scotland. Mm. Stabbings and uh, knife crimes coming down, but sexual violence, domestic violence, has continued to buck that trend. Mm. And when you add <coughs> platforms like telephones and tablets and mobile technology, the perpetrator group comes right down to 14 to 16 young men, girls 12 to 13. But the good news is that most young men come out at that time and go on to be successful people. And they think to themselves, what happened in those teenage years? But we can't ignore this explosion in harmful sexualized behavior, again, predominantly amongst young men. Male violence, men, you know, male violence on men, male violence on men, male violence on women, we see these issues all the time, you know, across, across Scotland. You know, I think something like 75% of violence in Scotland is committed by men against men. It's, it's an issue. And the last one, the male suicide, you know, violence is very personal to me. You know, my, my dad killed himself in 2008. It's very, very personal. I've got two girls who've, who've been victims of some men's violence as well. I want all of you to start thinking of violence as personal, as potentially personal. Because I think if you do treat it as a personal issue, you're less likely to blame victims and you're more likely to potentially stand up and challenge a person's behaviour. Start thinking about it. Don't, don't wait for it to happen. I've shared some personal stories already today. Right? Violence could be deeply personal. It has been, I know, to a lot of people in this room. So, some of the reasons why, you know, Dr. Phil talks about 
um, boys opting out of a confusing real world. Do you imagine growing up in, t in, this, t in this world today? It's so confusing for young boys. They're opting out of the real world and going into the virtual world, where we know, we talked about today, access to pornography, where the, the, the stereotypes around men are very, very rigid. And violence and abuse is often the tool that's used within that rigidity. We talk about fatherlessness. Boys need dads in special ways. This, you know, a friend of mine, James, used a lovely quote many years ago. If a young man has to look beyond the dinner table for a male role model, they're already at a disadvantage. Are you with me on that one? I'm not saying you know, there's some great single um, mothers out there doing fantastic work, but we take it dads back into the family, back at the dinner table, having that conversation with their young sons. And this, we've, we've touched on this, hurt people, hurt people. If you've not looked at the Adverse Childhood Experience Study done in San Diego back in the mid-90s, look at it. It explains a lot, it explains the vast majority of my recent career. Right, we can't, we can't ignore the impact of early years trauma and adversity. We've talked a lot today about this man box. And I think young, young men who are experiencing this adversity, they're in this man box, they lack resilience to be able to deal with the world, this real world that they're living in. And we often see the outcome is their behaviours towards other men, towards girls and women, and towards themselves as well. So we need to help our boys navigate this <coughs> real world. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I was pleased to hear Daxon talk about toxic, you know, this phrase, toxic masculinity. I don't like the phrase, but that doesn't mean I don't accept the dark acts of some men out there. And we need to confront some of these, the, the, these issues. But I like to start, and I'm going to, I'm going to provide some solutions, hopefully, and, you know, for the final part of my talk. I like to start from a positive narrative. I've, you know, I believe the vast majority of boys and men in this world are good guys. And we need to get that out, get that narrative out in the public domain, make men feel good about themselves, but talk about this bad stuff as well. We'll show you how I do that back in, back in Scotland. So some of the solutions I, I often talk about, you know, if you've not heard of Robert Cialdini from Arizona, look up his stuff. The more I do my work now, I think I'm in the business of persuasion. I'm trying to persuade men to move from that stance to that stance. And he, he's coined the phrase, the big mistake, where we fail to use pro-social norms to talk about issues. So we'll often talk about the negative issues in, in society. You know, one in 10 Scottish school kids have sent, sent or received a sexually explicit picture in the last year. That's the headline in the paper. The headline should be nine out of 10 kids don't do that. But still focus on the one out of 10. But let's look at the good stuff that is out there because that is a great persuader. Common purpose, common value is a really good persuader. So we need to find ways, and Jackson talked about it today, it's how we invite men, it's a phrase, was it glorious? Somebody coined that phrase many years ago. We invite, we need to invite people into a discussion, not point fingers at them. And when you throw in the impact of early years trauma, young boys and young girls have had the fingers pointed at them since they were this high. And when we point fingers at them, that won't help, they'll just react back to that. So we need to invite people into a discussion. And ways that I've been doing that, it's really, I'll talk about towards the end some methods that I've used to try and get people into the discussion. One thing we all need to do is develop a shared agenda. And that has been a success for us in Scotland, is how do we, how do we come together under this one umbrella? And for me, the shared agenda is healthy relationships. Who in here work in schools? So if we get relationships right in schools, the outcome is successful learning. Would that be fair to say? If we get relationships right in society, as a police officer, less violence. So, victims' organisations that are here, we want less violence. I take it that's why we're here, yeah? We, we, we want less violence. In schools, you want kids to do the best thing they can ever be, don't you? You want kids to attain and be successful. The shared agenda is relationships. That's our focus. Because sometimes when it comes to violence, we often, we're often in our own silos, doing what we think is our own work. Come together. We get relationships right. James Comer, American edu Education, has said, no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. You feel safe in your schools, you feel safe in your workplaces, you feel safe in your sports teams, you will be, you, be successful. So this is about relationships, not just in schools, but in workplaces, and sports teams, in the military, in whatever situation you find yourself in. Build relationships, the magic happens. Boys and stuff. <laughs> it's another long picture. You know, I bought a new car back in Scotland about three or four months ago, and I filled my car with stuff. I, I told this joke last night. It's not a joke, it's real, right? So I've got one of these fighter pilot displays on my dashboard. So I look through it and I can see where I'm going and my speed and my, 
you know, direction and any, any speed cameras that are coming up. That's stuff. I've got a subwoofer in my car that just bounces every time I turn that up. That's, that's stuff. Boy, you know, us men need stuff in our lives. Our boys need stuff. Our boys need tools. And start thinking, if you work with young boy, boys in society, young men in society, what tools do you think they need to be successful men in 2020, 2019, and 2020 and beyond? Because that's the... That's, the, the, that's the, the stuff you need to be giving to young boys and men. For me, it's, it's varied. You know, keeping good friends. We, we often struggle at finding and keeping good friends. Keeping healthy and strong, looking after yourself, pursuing healthy past, pastimes, questioning things that are wrong, understanding feelings, other people's feelings, your own feelings. This is the stuff we need to be giving boys. Being strong and gentle at the appropriate time. Being strong is okay at the appropriate time. Knowing when to ask for help. Taking responsibility. The only thing I agree with Jordan Peterson is he wants us to take responsibility. I agree with Jordan on that one. Okay? You're becoming a good life partner. Overcoming peer and negative pressure. Belonging to a community. And that last one, living within the rules of being a man. Be a man is the three words that boys fear. We need to help them understand that. Give them stuff. Give them stuff. Give them tools to make them the best men. That they, that they can be. Give them the toolbox to go out there in their schools and their sports teams and so on and do the best they can. Let's create a national conversation. When we start, when, when, when you had a conversation already, and last night you know, we were sitting in the hotel having a discussion. When we had that conversation, we had slightly different opinions, but conversations brought us together. You know, you're nodding your head. We, 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 we agree with each other. You know, we, have more than, we have more in common than which divides us. It was a lovely quote that was made by a, a member of parliament a few years ago in, in, in the UK. She was murdered by, I think, a, a white far-rights person, uh, Joe Cox. But one of her quotes in the, the parliament was, we have more in common than which divides us. And the only way we'll find that commonality is through conversation. And the other reason why conversation is important is because of this. Think, think of this. You know, we've all been in a situation where we've seen something that we're not happy with that's problematic. And the only way we're going to break this bubble down is to have a conversation that isn't, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm right, you're wrong. Let's have a conversation. Conversation and discussion is really important. What's that? You do call it broccoli in the United States? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> do you remember, you, 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 some people love broccoli, but I am, you know, for me, broccoli's been a journey. Yeah? It's a journey from spinning it out in the mouth to, this is quite nice. Let, let's, let's, let's give it a go. You know, within the conversation, we need to hide the distasteful stuff. We need to hide the broccoli. And the broccoli is talking about domestic violence, talking about sexual violence, talking about the dark side of masculinity. Not toxic, but talking about the dark stuff. Because for men to really move on, we need to embrace this stuff, lean into this stuff, own this stuff. Mm. I didn't own this stuff. It's meeting this guy back in, in Glasgow in 2010 when he started to talk to me as a dad and he, he, he forced me to own this stuff. We need to own this stuff. When we have these conversations, let's hide the broccoli. Let's start from a, point, a place of positive. Help young people build their brand. Help young men build their identity, what they stand for. I work with young men in prisons. You know, this is a brand from a, a group I worked with last week. You know, what do you stand for as a man in, in society? For me, that's the starting point when I work with young men. Who, who are they? You know, men that want to have good morals, I want to, be with, I want to have respect for other people, good family, determination, loyal, and so on. That's who our young men are. If we start from a negative stance, we're not getting that stuff out. Because when you get that stuff out, all, the, all this information I hear, young men start to relax. And they start to become reassured. You know, I was in a prison last year, working with dads, new dads. This is their values, this is their brand. They want to be present, even though they've been locked up for years, they want to be present. Because if we don't have a conversation and create these types of values for our young men, that's the stuff that they're going to be judged on. We need to talk about that stuff. Let's start from this stuff. More stuff, boys need more stuff, yeah. Um, but that's, that's, these are the words and the, the, the values we need to get out in our society for young men, to help them, invite them into the conversation that will make the, the, the movement we need in this world. Call to action. If you work with young men in society and young girls, keep working. But don't forget our boys. Our boys are struggling. 
right? Have the courage to, to, to lean into this issue and, and you know, watch the demise of guys from Dr. Phil. Fantastic TED talk, which looks at how our boys are struggling. Have the courage to lean into what's going on in this world. Okay, feel it. Someone, I think someone talked about compassion. Compassion's a feeling. It's not something you think about. It's a feeling you really have in you so that you, yet you want to act. See something, feel it, and act. It's very, very important. And just to end, you know, in summary, our boys need support. Our boys need our support. That's very, very true. If we ignore culture, it will eat us for breakfast. The man box will eat us for breakfast if we ignore it. Okay, create opportunities for conversation. Schools, sports teams. Conversations is where the relationships are built, where the magic happens. Every contact is a trace. Don't ever underestimate the power you have as a role model in a young boy's life. Every contact will leave a trace on that, on that young man. Discussion provides reassurance. Look for the positive. And the, the boy is what, you know, what I called um, Sheldini's big mistake. Focus on the positive in the world. Last TED talk I would recommend you watch. This was a, a guiding light for me. Rita Pearson, the black American teacher. Every kid needs a champion. The power of relationships. And that includes our boys. We need to start focusing a lot on our boys. Girls as well, fantastic. But don't forget our boys. Thanks very much. Thank you.